Hi. Welcome to God Time. One of the things about God Time is that we desire for you to start your day off your first 15 minutes just connecting with God. That's the beginning point. That's not the goal. That's a gateway. And so I just kind of bring to you some of the best devotions out there. Right now, I'm bringing our devotions from a Daily Hope by Rick Warren. And I want to talk to you about the subject of why you can't forgive someone too much. Can we just agree with something? We all have sources of irritation in our lives. People who repeatedly hurt us or mistreat us. The last thing we want to do is to forgive them. Peter had a similar concern. So one day he asked Jesus, Lord... If my brother keeps on sinning against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? In Matthew 18, 21, Peter thought he was being generous and he added this, seven times? Well, Jewish law required that you only had to forgive a person three times. So Peter says, I'll double that and throw in one more for good measure. How about seven times, Lord? But Jesus said, not seven times, but 70 times seven in Matthew 18, 22. In other words, there's no limit. Jesus was saying that if you're keeping score, then you're missing the point. And if you're counting, then it doesn't count. Jesus seems to give an impossible command to keep forgiving no matter what. Now, why is it important that we don't have a cap on forgiveness? Let me give you three reasons. Number one, God has forgiven me. The Bible says you and I owe a debt of gratitude to God. And that debt is so big we can never repay it on our own. But God has chosen in his mercy to forgive us and say, let's start over. That's the good news. God has forgiven my sins, and now he wants me to forgive other people. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as God in Christ forgave you. The key to forgiveness is to recognize how much God forgives me every day. When I feel forgiven, I'm going to be forgiving. The second thing, the second reason why my forgiveness shouldn't have a cap on it is because resentment makes me miserable. Now, resentment is hell on earth. It tortures you, and it's a self-inflicted wound. Uh, Paraphrasing some of the phrases in Job 21 through 23 through 25, it says some people die happy and at ease. Others have no happiness at all. They live and die with bitter hearts. You need to learn to forgive because resentment will ruin your life. The torture chamber of unforgiveness is self-imposed. When we fail to forgive, God doesn't have to lock us up in jail. We do it to ourselves. We lock ourselves in a jail of anger and anxiety. We rehearse the hurt over and over again, and it gets bigger and bigger and continues to hurt us long after it happened. The forgiveness of Jesus Christ is the key that unlocks the jail and it can set you free. For your own sake, you must learn to forgive. There's a third reason. I will need forgiveness in the future. Somebody once told John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, I could never forgive that person. Wesley said that I hope you never sin. See, here's the truth. You and I, we're going to sin again. But John says, if I say I don't have sin, I'm a liar and the truth isn't in me. We're going to need forgiveness again, but forgiveness is a two-way street. Don't burn the bridge you have to walk across in order to be forgiven. Now, forgiveness isn't an instant restoration of trust. Forgiveness is instant. Trust, though, must be rebuilt over time. For instance, if a woman has a husband that's abusive, should she forgive him? Yes. But does that mean she immediately lets him back so he can beat on her more? Absolutely not. She doesn't carry on her life as if nothing ever happened. That would be foolish. Forgiveness is instant and unearned, but trust has to be earned. There are people in my life that they have burned a bridge with me and I've forgiven them, but that doesn't mean I trust them immediately. I'm going to wait to see if they're they're really going to follow through this time. And there's people in my life that I burnt the bridge with. And I've had to go back and ask forgiveness and act in a way that would be trustworthy toward them. Listen, if you're human, you're both going to have someone that breaks your trust. And whether you mean to or not, you're going to be breaking somebody else's trust. But do the hard work. Forgive immediately. And then act with integrity to rebuild that trust. That's my prayer for you today. 
Let me pray for you now. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much that, Lord, you didn't put a cap on how much you forgave us. You said, Father, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us now to extend that same grace and forgiveness to others. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope you have an incredible day. Love God. Love one another. And that means forgiving one another. Now go be salt and light.